G'day nerds. So today we're going to look at how we um, write the discussion and conclusion from a scientific report. So our learning goal is to understand the components of a discussion and a conclusion in a scientific report and our success criteria is that we'll be able to write and critique, so find the problems in the discussion for a report. So these are our vocabulary. If I just get you to pause the video here and write these down so you've got them to refer back to as we move through the lesson, that would be ACEs. Uh, thank you. All right, cool. So our discussion. So the discussion attempts to explain basically what we see, not just what we see, but why that has happened. So we're looking at explaining the trends. And when we do that, we're going to talk about the limitations of our experiment. So where, what stops it from being perfect, right? Um, we also want to know how to improve the discussion, improve the experiment for future iterations. Um, and that's why this is usually the longest part of the report. So in our discussion, the first paragraph, so we're going to break this down by paragraph by paragraph. And if that sounds like you're writing a fair bit, that's because you are. Uh, so the first paragraph explains the trends and should refer to data points specifically. It means actually mention individual data points, as well as any background research and also any outliers. But back to the background research. You're going to talk about that in your introduction to a report, so that's important. But it should refer back to it. Um, the outliers in the data, remember, we don't ignore outliers. That's really important. If you're ignoring data, you're cherry picking, and that's bad science. So we might want to talk about the outliers. At least mention that there were outliers, and hopefully, if we can explain why they're outliers, golden. But if we can't, we need to acknowledge their presence. Um, we should do a paragraph at least outlining the systematic errors. So these are errors that occur because of the equipment used, and they can't be better. Like, for example, one systematic error might be if we've got a measuring cylinder and it's accurate to plus or minus 0.5 milliliters. That means any thing we measure is going to be off by 5 milliliters in either direction. So we need to talk about that, um, as well as we can discuss future improvements. If we can get more accurate equipment, etc. that'll do the job. Um, so we need to talk about their impact and how we can work on it. There should also be a paragraph outlining each of the validity, reliability, and accuracy of the experiment. And I'll make sure there's a link below to another video which goes into those concepts in detail. We also need to discuss future improvements there. Um, the final paragraph is discussing our research and our results in a broader context. So in other words, where can these results be used and why our experiment's important? Why is it worth knowing? So finally, we write the, the conclusion. This is a short statement that refers to the hypothesis and states the trend of the data. And they are concise. See what I did there by putting an extra step in? They're concise. That's important. So while our discussion is quite large, our conclusion can be as simple as as the length of the pendulum increases, the period of the pendulum also increases. All right. I hope that made a lot of sense. Uh, if it didn't, Put any questions you have in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye now.